Hi everyone. Well, this has been a tough week for NASA. NASA had scheduled the first launch of the Artemis 1 mission for this week, but had to postpone the launch twice due to technical issues. Unfortunately, the Artemis 1 mission will not launch now any sooner than September 19th. NASA scheduled the launch of astronauts to the International Space Station for early October and this may cause another delay for the Artemis 1 launch. In this video, we're going to bring you up to date on the status of the Artemis 1 mission. Welcome to Reaching for the Moon. Orion's journey of a half a million miles, the first flight of the Artemis program, is finally ready to begin. The uncrewed Artemis 1 mission will jumpstart humanity's return to the moon with a thunderous liftoff of NASA's powerful new Space Launch System rocket and the Orion spacecraft. As we previously discussed, the SLS, which is required to get the Orion spacecraft to the moon, is billions over budget and has been delayed many times. Congress's decision to continue to fund the SLS is an ongoing sore spot within the space industry. Private companies are now developing much less expensive alternatives, but the SLS is still being funded. NASA needs a successful launch and mission very badly to keep their reputation as a leader in space exploration. This critical Artemis I mission will send Orion farther than any human-rated spacecraft has ever flown before, testing new systems and processes while certifying Orion in the future for crewed missions. Let's start with a rollout of the SLS and Orion from the VAB recently. Here's a short clip from NASA. On the night of August 16th, teams at our Kennedy Space Center began the approximately four mile move of the Space Launch System or SLS rocket and Orion spacecraft from the Vehicle Assembly Building to Launch Pad 39B in preparation for the launch of our uncrewed Artemis 1 flight test. The rocket and spacecraft arrived at the pad the next morning. Once on the launch pad, the SLS and Orion were then scheduled to launch on August 30th. However, during the countdown, one of the rocket's four RS-25 engines could not reach the proper temperature range required for the engine at liftoff. Thus, it caused a scrub of the Artemis mission. While technically new, the SLS is based on older technology. The engines used on the SLS were left over from the NASA Space Shuttle program, which ended in 2011. It also means that each SLS is only able to fly once. It's not reusable like the SpaceX Starship Super Heavy Launch Vehicle that SpaceX is designing for moon missions. SpaceX expects Starship's first orbital test flight to take place sometime in the next six months. NASA made another attempt to launch the SLS on Saturday, September 3rd, 2022. However, once again, leaks in the valves using the hydrogen fueling system were discovered as the SLS was being fueled for flight. Thus, another scrub. And it's not unusual for a mission to be scrubbed, especially when it's the first flight as this is for the SLS. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson said in a pro-scrub interview, NASA wants to get it right, especially when humans will be involved as they will be on the next Artemis missions. NASA has not yet announced the new launch date, but that will probably be in October, which will mean that the SLS and the Orion will only be rolled back to the VAB in the interim. Launch opportunities are mostly limited by the stage of the moon, as well as other considerations, including the next International Space Station flight. This is not the start NASA was looking for in the Artemis program. The images that we have shown so far of Artemis 1 on the launch pad is, are on the launch pad at Kennedy Space Center. Now, let's close this video with a NASA clip outlining the Artemis goals. Artemis stands ready. Ready to turn dreams into reality. Ready to return humanity to the moon and take us further than ever before. 
The culmination of inspiration and innovation, of Herculean efforts and steadfast collaboration, Artemis I is ready for departure. And the Artemis generation is about to leave its mark. What will be a journey of more than a half a million miles to the moon and back starts right here at Launch Complex 39 Bravo. Although this first flight will not carry a crew, it will test every system in the deep depths of space to prepare the way for future crewed missions. When the final go is given and the teams at Kennedy Space Center release this rocket, Artemis will roar to life and we will witness the beginning of a tightly choreographed mission. The first two and a half minutes lift Artemis off Earth and build momentum. It's another six minutes of pressing uphill, accelerating to orbit. This is followed by a push from the second stage to raise Orion higher. And once all the systems are cleared to continue, the second stage will fire again and push Orion beyond the bounds of Earth. At this point, we're going to the moon. It'll take several days to reach our destination, but as we sprint across the void, many new procedures and systems will be tested and proven. 240,000 miles later, Orion will enter an oval-shaped orbit around the moon, one that will take Orion to about 60 miles above the lunar surface and then out to 40,000 miles beyond the moon. This is a distance farther than any human-rated spacecraft has ever gone before. As momentous as reaching the moon will be, returning to Earth is just as significant and challenging. Every observation we make, every lesson we learn on this journey prepares the way for humans to safely venture out and return home. And so on its final lap around the moon, Orion will ignite its main engine, push out of lunar orbit, and begin the long trek home. This is a spacecraft built for the harsh conditions of deep space, as well as intensity of returning home. Nearing Earth, Orion separates from the main power and propulsion systems of the European Service Module and prepares for the final sequence of events. Entering Earth's atmosphere at 24,500 miles per hour, the heat shield endures the fury of re-entry. The air around Orion reaches temperatures half as hot as the sun, but also slows Orion considerably. Until finally, parachutes can deploy, allowing Orion to gently dip into the Pacific Ocean. To the moon and safely home again. This is the journey of Artemis I, and it will set the precedent for all that follows. United with partners around the world, this is the challenge we choose. To meet hand in hand, step by step, lighting the way from the Earth to the Moon to Mars and beyond. We are ready. Hopefully the cause for these SLS hydrogen leaks can be determined soon and fixed to allow for a successful Artemis I launch. We will keep you up to date on the Artemis I progress. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like and subscribe buttons to be notified every time Reaching for the Moon posts a new video. In the meantime, remember, Failure is not an option. Bye.